Elliot Spencer was known as the sheriff of Wall Street before his downfall. But now that he's gone, will Wall Street get cocky again? Let's throw that question into our Fox panel. Peter Schiff, author of Crash Proof. John Rutledge, chairman of Rutledge Capital. Joran Brook of the Ayn Rand Institute. And Mike Norman, host of BizRadio.com. This radio have... network, also Eric Desenhall, is with us as well. I wouldn't forget about you, Eric. John, though, first to you, uh, Wall Street is, was kind of licking its chops for the past couple of days because of all that it was put through by Elliot Spitzer, but are they doing that too early? They, they still got a very hard-driving Democrat in office as governor. Oh, no, this is not a question of who, which party's in office or... Uh, what the laws are, David. This was a man who went around Wall Street blackmailing firms at uh, uh, over, uh, I'll uh, investigate you and uh, knock you over. At the same time, he was raising money to run for governor. This is a bad man, and I'm very happy to see that this is uh, over. In fact, it's, uh, there's an irony. You had Betsy on the show. Betsy, my friend uh, McCoy, should be the governor of New York. She was too principled to live with the politicians, so she left politics. There and you, you end up with a guy like Spitzer. The contrast is, ex is extraordinary Indeed. between the two. But you're only as strong as your network of friends. You have to treat people well. And uh, in, for a leader, what you want in business or in politics is character, character, character. It's all that matters. Uh, Mike Norman, there are a lot of people out there to fill Elliot Spitzer's shoes, and you're seeing the crackdown on lenders and the like. What's Wall Street's reaction? Well, Wall Street, obviously, they hate this guy. You know, there was cheering. I heard there was cheering at, on the Merrill Lynch trading floor when it was announced that he was stepping down. But, but look, the, we could sit here and debate his tactics all day long. There's no question about it. But uh, when there's a lot of money at stake, look, we went through these uh, the crackdowns on insider trading. It, it seems almost every decade we get a resurfacing of that, no matter what sort of uh, uh, remedies or, or you know implementations are put in place to to keep that from happening. There's a lot of money at stake there. I wouldn't be surprised to see Wall Street kind of you know try to drift back to its old ways. Uh, it, it seems to always uh, you know pop up in that direction. Yaron Brook, when you invest so much power in an individual, first as attorney general, then as governor of the state of New York, you have the power of the state behind you. Our founding fathers didn't think, they thought that that power had to be regulated very carefully. Did Spitzer step over that boundary when, at first as attorney general and then as governor? Uh, absolutely. I mean, he's not the sheriff of Wall Street. He's the bandit of Wall Street. I mean, this guy was a thug who intimidated uh, corporations, intimidated uh, individuals into doing his bidding, uh, using, uh, using the Martin uh, Act, which is, uh, I think, an unconstitutional New York law that allows these attorney generals to, uh, to blackmail, blackmail businesses uh, into changing their behavior. Uh, yes, this is a clearly an abuse of power, but, but to begin with too much power, I'd love to see politicians take a step back from power, but unfortunately we're not going to see that anytime soon. But Peter, don't we need somebody, even if you disagree with Spitzer's tactics, to really crack down on practices that take advantage of investors? Because oh. Wall Street's hard hit now, but surely you're going to have loose and fast times once again in the future. Well, you know, I think the investors, though, have to do a lot of this on their own and not look to government. You know, most people, when they go to a you know, used car lot, you know, they look at the salesman there with a lot of skepticism. They understand what's going on. You've got to look at the same thing when you're dealing with Wall Street. I mean, there are a lot of conflicts of interest there. Just because somebody makes a recommendation that you do something, it doesn't necessarily mean that that's what they really think that you should do. And so people have to do their own I'm homework. to know that. I mean, that's exactly the point. I mean, when they found these internal emails and stuff between guys like Jack Grubman pumping WorldCom and telling clients, you know, it's the greatest it's, thing. And then internally he's saying this is a piece of junk and we don't want it. Nobody was forced to invest I mean, based come on, on there has to be some sort of policing it's, on that to say, look, I'm not against the personal responsibility aspect. You're right about that. But when these firms are out there, you know, pitching to the public and internally they're saying a completely different thing, you can't allow that. Yaron, go ahead. I, uh, this, I, is th this is, of, this is exactly an issue of individu individual responsibility. And you, nobody had to listen to these, uh, to these guys. Uh, the mutual funds, the institutional investors who were acting on it were, were just not doing their own research. They weren't doing their own stuff. So, uh, you know, to, 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 to uh, use an attorney general to go after these things is absurd. Now, when fraud is committed, prove fraud. But Spitzer never proved right. fraud. Spitzer used the the power he had to blackmail but what, these companies but Eric, into changing but, behavior. But Eric, to bring Eric Diesenhall in here, but without somebody like Spitzer, is Wall Street going to get cocky again? 
Well, look, I mean, I, you know, people, human nature will not change. But right. I think what you had here was the French Revolution where everybody wanted to get rid of the king and who did they end up with but Napoleon. I mean, okay. so, the, you know, it, it, was there a problem? Of course. And will Wall Street uh, and businesses misbehave? Absolutely. But the problem is you had this whole dynamic where you could destroy companies on the grounds that you really didn't like them. And I think that in, in, in order to, to correct things, you have to be able to prove there was fraud. And I think one of the other things that is not really being discussed that much is the role that the news media played, not in reporting Spitzer's activity, but they were his active shock troops in printing whatever he wanted because he owned the right narrative. And I think that yeah. that created a monster. By the way, excellent piece in the Wall Street Journal today saying just that uh, Kimberly yes. Strassel outlined exactly how the media did uh, act in some cases like a, a co-captain of uh, not of every member Spitzer's. of the media not, not every, every not every but quite a few quite a few all right well i mean i think by and large Quickly. what spitzer was doing you know court, courting the new york okay. press you, you you drop off a box at the new york we times do. they run with it eric, all right eric we